I don't often do video breakdowns on starships themselves, I tend to focus on the tales around them, but one of my favourite ship designs is the Akira class, so here's a breakdown on it. The real life origin for the class was from Industrial Light and Magic's designer Alex Yeager, who wanted to create a battleship style Starfleet vessel. The name was selected as a homage to the science fiction anime film Akira from 1988, one I would consider a classic. Jaeger would also go on to design the Sabre, Norway and Steamrunner class starships, all with similar themes in mind. The Akira design was so unique and eye-catching though that it went on to be one of the inspirations for the NX class Enterprise that went on to be the title ship for that series. In universe however, the ship had rocky beginnings. The Starfleet has always shied away from aggressive vessels, even if they are completely capable of making them. For example, the Galaxy class packed some of the greatest firepower of the late 24th century starships, but it was built with far more than combat in mind. Primarily a deep space explorer vessel made for long term missions. However, nerds like space battles and fictional ones are apparently no exception, as the Akira was designed by starship engineers pretty much as a thought experiment to see what they could produce. It was created during the Federation's war with Cardassia during the mid-24th century, however the concept was never expected to see the light of day considering its focus on firepower and performance in combat. Similar projects had been dismissed before, such as the Defiance, which was far too powerful for its small size and shelved. However, the Battle of Wolf 359 served as a harsh lesson for Starfleet, that lesson being that they could not continue to push ships into battle situations if those vessels were woefully underpowered when compared to what they were capable of producing. Just saying, a lone Borg cube would have had a much more difficult time defeating 40 galaxy classes than the aging fleet of Miranda, Excelsior and even a Constitution class starship that was its opposition. The realisation that Starfleet needed to modernise its fleet was helmed by the Advanced Ship Design Bureau, which had facilities at all major Federation shipyards. In specifics, they focused down on taking their technologies at play on ships like the Galaxy class and optimising them down for combat and making them into a far more conservative frame. They also revived a couple of mothballed schematics, such as the Akira design and began to work on the first of its class, the USS Akira NX62497. The design was worked on at the Antares fleet yards at Antares 4, and the designated role for the vessel was a heavy cruiser. Its length was 464.43 metres, beam 316.67, and height 87.43. It had a mass of just over 3 million tonnes, and a standard crew of around 500 personnel. However, it could hold up to 4,500 in emergencies. Much greater focus was put on its offensive output with six Type 10 phaser emitters and two Mark 80 torpedo launchers, although other designs have this at the reserved end, and sight around 15 instead, probably from the weapons pod. It did have ablative armour, as first seen on the prototype Defiant class vessel, and could maintain a maximum speed of Warp 9.8 for 12 hours, placing it on par with the Sovereign class, but not with the long term cruise speeds of the Intrepid. Its profile was far lower than those of previous vessels, at only 19 to 26 decks, making for a smaller target area in combat when it was face on with an enemy. It's also worth noting that the twin arms that ran down the length of the saucer's section to the pylons provided the bridge with a recessed position and high degrees of cover than a standard starship. Another major difference for the Akira was the main shuttle bay, which was proportionally huge in comparison to previous vessels, taking up and around a third of the saucer section. The shuttle bay ran from the prow of the vessel to the rear of the saucer, and the reason for this was so that the shuttle bay could deploy a large number of fighters from the fore of the vessel as it entered combat, then returning craft could enter from the rear bays. The Akira was therefore also perfect for housing Starfleet's few actual fighter vessels, none of which are really seen in canon but existed in other media. Its standard complement of ships was to be the usual 10 work bees for maintenance alongside 10 shuttlecraft of varying types, but also 40 fighter craft. 
I'm picturing some real Battlestar Galactica launches here, that would be awesome. However, there were some features included based on successful designs that had come before, and were implemented on previous ships, such as the Nebula class, that being the mission pod that was attached between the nacelles. This was a section of the vessel that was easily removed and replaced with an entirely new section depending on the mission profile. Unlike the Nebula class, however, which predominantly saw a sensor system, the default for the Akira was usually a weapons platform. Alternatives could be placed, however, like science pods with modified sensor systems. The overall style of the vessel, from shedding the extensive lounges and family facilities, and new hull technologies darkening down the colour, adhered to the new Starfleet aesthetic of Starships 2, which was reflected in future projects like the Sovereign, with their streamlined hull design and generally more conservative look moving forwards. The USS Akira was launched in 2368, and in theory had a lifespan of 18 years without refit required. However, due to its high probability of combat missions, I doubt this theoretical lifespan ever came to be truly tested. The emergence of the Akira class came just in time for Starfleet, with the second attempt at a Borg incursion culminating in the Battle of Sector 001. While the Enterprise E is often credited with sealing the victory for the Federation, let's not ignore the fact that a far smaller fleet than that of Wolf 359 was able to hold off the Borg cube for longer, and alongside the Defiant, the Akira class USS Thunderchild was amid the surviving participants. The Akira class would go on to see extensive use during the Dominion War, which began shortly thereafter, and it is no doubt that had the Federation not decided to step up its game when it did, the outcome of that war would be very different. The Akira continued to see use into the 25th century, with the USS Avalon, Firesword, Helios and Raven taking part in the Counter-Borg incursion fleet in 2401. In terms of naming conventions for the Akira class, I did notice a trend towards naming them after fictional things, such as Akira itself, the Thunderchild being from the War of the Worlds, Avalon being the mythical isle of Arthurian legend, and Helios being named for the Greek god of the sun. While this would be a cool trend, it is not consistent, as we also have the Raven, and other named vessels in Apocrypha that derived their titles from real-world influential people. So, thanks for watching my breakdown of the Akira class Starship, a fan favourite, and one of mine too. I'd place it as not quite as battle-orientated as the Defiance, but not as multi-purpose as the Sovereign. I'll probably cover a couple of other standout vessel types in the future, so be sure to let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Until the next one though, thanks again, I've been Rick, and goodbye.